last week on the Go Bowling PBA Tour. New Hall of Famer Tommy Jones rolled a perfect 300 game. To win the first event of 2020, the PBA Hall of Fame Classic. Fast forward to today, and the only man to ever have bowled two 300 games on television is back. Sean Rash tries to climb the step ladder to win Oklahoma. We'll have to knock off some great bowlers, like the dynamic two-hander Jesper Svensson. And former U.S. Open champion Ryan Simonelli. It's the PBA Oklahoma Open, and it's next, live on FS1. This is the Fire Lake Bowling Center in Shawnee, Oklahoma, just down the road from Oklahoma City. It's the site of the 2020 PBA Oklahoma Open. We have five of the world's best bowlers competing for a tour title and big prize money. The second event of the new tour season, another significant step toward the season-ending PBA playoffs. We started with 88 bowlers in this tournament, down to five. Former player of the year in our midst in Sean Rash. Jasper Spence, the lone international player left. He has eight titles, the top seed, the super southpaw, Ryan Simonelli. Step ladder bowling will lead us to a championship. Both Hacky, ha Hacky Hanrahan and Brad Miller are looking for their first career PBA tour title today. Welcome to Shawnee. It's great to have you with us, Dave, right alongside the Hall of Famer, Randy Peterson, joined by Kimberly Pressler throughout the broadcast as well. Randy, good to be back with you on the PBA Tour. Good to have you back, buddy. I'm psyched for today. Yep. How in the world do we top last week in Arlington, Texas? Tommy Jones inducted to the Hall of Fame on one night. The next day wins the Hall of Fame Classic with a 300 game in the championship. Oh, I know. How about someone who's rolled two 300 games? Yeah, I don't know if you can top last week, but uh, a guy that knows how to bowl 300, as you mentioned, I'm TV is this man Sean Rash. He's done it not once but twice. The only player to do it in PBA competition. His first coming right here in Shawnee in 2014 and then less than a year later he does it at the Tournament of Champions. Sean Rash can strike with the best of them but today Dave today's theme in my mind is about one thing. It's about power. And I'm talking power from the left side of the lane. And today we have a first on the PBA Tour. Not one, but two two-handed lefties. Jesper Svensson, Packy Hanrahan. And if Packy can get by Rash, they'll meet each other in the next match. But all roads to the championship go through our number one seed, our last southpaw, Ryan Simonelli. And a very interesting connection between Packy and Sean because they both bowl collegiately at Wichita State. And they go head to head in this match. 2003 national champ, a two-time All-American Sean Rash. Packy Hanrahan, 2015 team national champ for the Shockers as well. Kimberly has our first two competitors, lane level. Thanks, Dave. So, Sean, you're going up against the guy who's never made a TV final before. How much of an advantage is that for you today? It's not an advantage right now. He worked his ass off to get here. So proud of him. But right now, he's not my friend. He's my competitor. I wish him the best. Uh, but. He's put a lot of work in on the offseason, and uh, you can see right now why he's on the show. All right, thank you so much for your time, and good luck. And, Packy, yesterday in players' interviews, we talked about your nerves. You're under the lights. The time is now. How are they? Uh, definitely still there, but definitely ready to throw some shots for sure. All right, well, we wish you the best of luck today. All right, thank you. Kimberly, thanks. Oil patterns today, Randy. Two very distinct, diverse, challenging conditions. Yeah, another dual oil pattern, back-to-back -back weeks. Wolf, the shortest of all the PBA patterns on the right lane. The players are going to fire it to the outside extreme edges, and that's going to pose some danger because we did have a lot of gutter balls this week. On the left lane, the long dragon at 45 feet. Players are going to use very strong equipment, go much straighter. The thing I love about the dual patterns, Dave, is navigating this brings out the versatility and mental agility of the players. Let's meet Packy. A member of the 2015 Wichita State National Championship team, he finished seventh in last week's PBA Hall of Fame Classic, Packy. Hanrahan. Well, I think we wanted to talk about Sean Rash, so I will. He's got a new bowling ball manufacturer, a new outlook, and a new attitude. This future Hall of Famer looks for title number 15 today.
John a is member ready. of the 2015 Wichita State National Championship team. He finished seventh in last week's PBA Hall of Fame Classic, Packy Hanrahan. And Dave, our first look at Packy, first time under the bright lights, and the first time feeling this kind of pressure. How he handles the nerves today will determine his fate. He's the four seed. And not the only Packy in his family. He's actually Packy Jr. Real name Patrick. We'll get into that story today. I'm Very gonna, interesting name. I'm going to let you handle all of that. So here's Packy Hanrahan. Now lives in Wichita, originally from Greenwich, Connecticut. First career. PBA Tour TV shot right here. Two hand and lefty. And a baby split. With a 2 7. Thoroughly enjoyed our time with him yesterday when we were interviewing him. Uh, just a, a, a very personable young man. Sound, uh, sounds extremely intelligent. And uh, it, it was uh, just a, a great conversation with him and some of the, the things that he was saying about making his first ever telecast. We'll get to that a little bit later. A graduate of Wichita State. His free time now, a substitute teacher. Maybe split here early. Challenging lead and takes care of business for his mark. Yeah, that'll loosen you up a little bit. Talked about how nervous he was yesterday. And he was like, well, if I'm this nervous the day before the telecast, I wonder what's going to happen on the telecast. Intro, no intro. Okay, never mind. We got that intro out of the way. Yeah, we just did it early. That's okay. Unfortunately, no. Sean, we already did that. It wasn't okay. your fault. This is a great story, and uh, we have a lot to talk about this season with Sean Rash. Red lane. Very good little shot. You can see and just, four. sorry, Dave, you can see just how close to the edge it gets. Uh, the two and a half board at the break point on that right lane, and we're going we're gonna to watch for that throughout today's telecast. Remember, 39 boards across the lane, and the players both on the right and left side will play the edge. There's a fourth there's a mark, the spare for Sean Rash on the 32-foot wolf pattern. On this wolf pattern, you and I called it at the Grand Casino a few miles down the road from here in Sean, a 300 game. Yeah. It, not in the title match, but en route to a championship for Sean Rash that yes. year, 2014. Yeah, so what does that tell you about the wolf pattern? I'm guessing he kind of likes it. He likes it. Tries to slay the dragon on the left lane, 45 feet. John's first catch at it. Look at the shot, 10 pin stand. And, and you can see just how completely different these two oil patterns are, and how 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 polar opposite, if you will. Sean using a very strong ball on the left lane and leaves the flat 10. There was very little motion down lane. The right lane, the ball looked like it got halfway down the lane and somebody kicked it left. Hey, I made that one. He's happy with that. Single pin, spare conversion. And cross lane for the 10. No worries for the sure thing Hall of Famer. 14 titles, oh, couple yeah. of majors. I made that one. A resurgent 2019. And he seems so confident, so at ease with his game and his personal life when we met with him last night. Mm -hmm. A yeah, big, big story about Sean Rash, and after uh, Packy throws the next two frames, we'll talk about it. All oh, ten back into the pit. Packy Hanrahan shreds the rack on the right lane. Using urethane on that right lane, extremely dry, short oil pattern. We saw most of the players this week using urethane on that right lane just to try to control it because there's so much friction. Seventh last week in Arlington at the SBC Training Center. Yeah, and you know, he bowled all year last year. His, his best finish was 14th. Left lane, whoa, split city. It's the two, four, six, ten. Four, six, ten, split. And Packy will try to get his bowling ball over to this side of the two pin. 
and throw the two over into the 6-10. Maybe not as difficult as the big four, but it's oh, right oh, no, up there. Not even close. Uh, this, is, this is very makeable. Let's see if he converts. First TV show, the youngster knows. 6-10 stands, open frame. Early on for Packy Hammerhand. You, you know, and, and, and I call and I call BS and Sean Rash's uh, interview with Kimberly as a as a veteran. The one thing that you actually salivate at when you go up against a first timer, first game on television, that's the guy you want to bowl. You get your legs underneath you. You know that guy's so nervous. It's a big advantage for Sean Rash. So the Arsenal saw the strike for Sean Rash. I think he was just trying to be too PC. So uh, at least they you know, And that was nice of him, but let me tell you something. When he knew he was going up against a guy that's never been on television before, he, he, he liked his chance. He told us that last night, Ray. He was honest with us last night about it. Well, sure you would. Why not? The guy with the experience and his success. Yeah. And all 10 back into the pit on the right lane. So Sean, after with Brunswick Corporation for 17 years, makes the jump to 900 global in, in a stunning move, big oh. move after the season. He saw the graphic, he had beat Hanrahan in match play earlier in the event. His wife, Sarah, looks on. So yeah, I mean, that was a, that was kind of a big buzz that went through the industry when, you know, kind of the face of, of Brunswick left and went to a, another company. Major yeah. bowling headline. Yep. And then it only took him two weeks to make his first telecast with 900 Global. And I asked him, I said, how did you get there so fast? He said, well, I signed my contract January 3rd, and I drilled 40 bowling balls since then. The balls arrived the same day, signed the contract, ready to go. Packy, right lane. Six pin stands for Packy Henrahan. His dad is Patrick. When his dad was growing up, someone had trouble in the house pronouncing Patrick, so he became Packy. And now he's Packy Jr. Okay. My middle name is Patrick. I'm not going to go with Packy. I'm not going to call you that. Good. Yeah. So. But it's unique. It's a cool name. It is. Memorable. I Six like pin it. for him here. Whoa. Whiffs on it. Wide right. Just tough miss. It's just got to be nerves. I mean, it, it's, it's a pretty tough environment, especially when you haven't been there. And we talked with Packy yesterday and... Kim and I specifically talked about the process. You know, you, you make you make match play, you make cuts, you make TV, you learn how to bowl on TV. It's all about a process. And he knows that. He's a smart kid. Back-to-back -back opens. After the lone strike in the second frame. Now for Packy. He had some serious trouble. Left lane. Can't find it. Now he's got a terrible look. He, he, you know, he goes high on the last shot on the left lane. He gives it a little bit more room. He goes light. Look, look at how straight it is on that left on that left lane. And all you have to do to make the ball go straighter is do what? Put some more oil on the lane and make it longer. And remember, friction is what makes the bowling balls curve. And if there's no friction, they're not going to curve. It's like kind of driving your car on a sheet of ice. Challenging. 2017, Richie T's last time it happened where the bowler in his debut show won that show. Takes care of business there with a nice spare. But still down a bunch to Sean Rash. A chance for a 44 pin lead here for Sean Rash. Yep. Now, I'm not going to say handball because that no, is you used by you Rob Stone. You cannot do that. That I is Rob Stone's. You get an alert only. on your phone every time you say handball. You can't. Cease and assist. Yeah. Look out. Turkey, try. Ten pin. Stands. So you take a look at the position there. Remember, it wasn't long ago where I showed you a number that said 2.6, and that's 0 0.7. So a good two boards or two inches to the right of a shot that he threw previously on the right lane. There's the 10. There's the mark. Flirting with disaster. So close to the gutter on that right lane. Yeah, and you know, people wonder why they do, why the players do that. Well, the, the oil pattern dictates it. You know, the oil pattern tells the players where to play. But that's living on the edge. Look at how far right that is. But the players had to do that. Ten at the arrows all the way out to the .7 board and back. The pocket's like right around 17 and a half board. So that's a lot of real estate that bowling ball's covering. 
2012. Chris Schenkel, Player of the Year winner. Sean Rash. Up and Alaska. There's that messenger across the deck, and down goes number 10. Get on down there. It was a little soft messenger, but he'll take it. Tap on the tan, Randy. And run away at Shawnee. Nothing like it. The PBA Tour on FS1. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Go Bowling. For promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you, log on to GoBowling.com. Time now for a Flow Bowling Tournament Highlights final match position round ready. Dom Barrett needed to finish strong against Sean Rash, but came up a little short, didn't he? Yeah, he was a little over 40 pins down going into position round. He just couldn't mount a big enough comeback. Sean Rash, however, he held on to that fifth and final spot despite throwing it in the gutter midway through his match against Dom Baird. Nice shot there. Sean grabs the fifth and final spot. Kyle Sherman bowled well this week, finishing ninth. Really talented young bowlers. Brad Miller's co-host together on the YouTube channel. Yeah, he'll be running the camera while Brad's bowling today. Darren Tang, another strong week after his runner-up finish last week in Arlington. Now the top seed, the lefty, Ryan Simonelli, here today in Oklahoma. All right, our piece of other finishers this week. Tom Barrett, we just saw out of England finishing at sixth place. Chris Brother, talented young bowler as well right there. Kyle Sherman's doing a lot of yeah, filming yeah, right yeah. now for that YouTube channel right in front of us. Mitch Hoope is actually Packy Hanrahan's roommate back in Wichita. Pretty cool. I asked him, I said, is uh, Packy messy? And he said, yeah. And then Packy said he was lying. Darren Tang, finalist last week, was the top seed before Tommy Jones steamrolled him with that 300 game in Arlington. The 27th all time 300 game thrown on TV. And here we go. Second half, first match, Hanrahan looking for a big rally. Down by 33. Packy packs them all back with a big jack. Family is here. Kimberly has more. Thanks, guys. So only two years separates Packy and his older sister, Maddie, who flew in from Boston last night to watch her little brother bowl. Now, Packy tells me that she is a physical therapist, and he relies on her weekly for tips about aches and pains from bowling. So I asked her this morning if she gave him any advice, and she said, yes, stretch like you normally do and stick with the plan. So she's not just here to give PT advice. She's here cheering him on. What a great moment for the family. Isn't that something? Now, Maddie, sister, fiance, guess what his name is? Uh, let, let me take a stab at it. Packy? Patrick, of course. We saw Patrick in the gym today at the hotel. He's pretty pumped up, ready to watch Packy Ball. A great family showing coming out from Connecticut on short notice to watch Packy compete here in Oklahoma. Big strike there. Here's Rash, works on a strike. Seventh frame to go up by 33 pins. Grabbing a demon from uh, out of the air and disposing of it. Way to go, Sean. Can't have any demons flying around your head when you're trying to throw uh, uh, your second double of the game. It's a bad idea. He looks for his fourth strike of the match. Blue line's the good line. Four pin. It, it, oh, shot. You can see the last shot, shot. The red line was pretty good. It, it almost mirrored the blue oh, line. And he said, oh, I just missed it. Keeping it in between the, the edge of the gutter and the third board. There's the four. There's the spare. First day an all bracing return for Daytona 500. Kicks off the 2020 NASCAR season, February 16th, on Fox. Eighth frame for Rash. Comfortable lead, 
but not a put away lead quite yet. Max scores, there they are. Yeah. Important strike. Take a look at the break point on the left lane versus the right lane. It's a good four to five boards Great left. Shot, shot. And that's because of the length of the oil on that dragon oil pattern. Remember, 45 feet on the left lane, only 32 feet on the right lane. So that short oil pattern, the players have to create much more angle through the front part of the lane. Start with 88 players. The cut to 16, then match play, bonus pins for victories. Top five here, step ladder finals in Shawnee. Looking for three in a row. Okay. Yeah. Six pin and a really good shot. And we'll put some pressure. And Sean Rash throws that lead down. Nice. 14 pins, just missed it. Yeah, you're right. You know what, if he would have struck in the eighth and ninth frame, he could have cut the deficit to three, but instead it's that six pin and he's running out of time. That's a shame. First time on TV had the back-to-back -back open frames early in the match. Keep in mind, too, the 2015 Wichita State National Championship team, shot. he was actually in the stand yeah. during that show. He didn't compete in the Baker format team title for Wichita State, not on the lineup for Gordon Vatican that night. So this is his first ever TV appearance. Well, I, I think one of the, the most intriguing stories about him is that uh, his first tournament that he ever bowled in his life was between his junior and senior year of high school. It's amazing. And, and talking with Tommy Jones last night, Tommy told me that he thinks that Packy has the most tricks in terms of what he can do at release than any of the other two-handed uh, players on tour, maybe next to uh, short of Belmonte. But Tommy Jones said, man, that kid's talented. He can do a lot of different things with a bowling ball. That's high praise from the Hall of Fame. All right, here's Rash, foundation frame, trying to put things away here. Stay on the lane. Get your head. And it strikes all oh, Tam back again for Sean Rash. Beautiful shot here by Sean. Just you just have to trust it and execute. I asked him last night. I said, "What about the gutter balls?" He said, "Well, I had three of them." I said, "Well, what's the key to making sure it doesn't go in?" He says, "You just got to make sure your hands in the right spot and the direction through the front is perfect." Nine to shut him. Has 10, has the win. And Sean Rash advances. Will it recede? Yes, for Spencer is next. Got it inside a little in bit. Bag. That ball just laid there because of that oil there, on that long dragon oil pattern. Look beautiful. Sean Rash is moving on to face the Iceman. Yes, for Spencer. Sean Rash with an impressive win here. Tommy Jones last week, Arlington, Texas, inducted to the Hall of Fame Saturday night. 14 hours later, Randy, perfection, the Hall of Fame Classic. 300 game against the top seed, Darren Tang, to walk away with a title, 20th of his career, 27th all time, perfect game on TV. A $10,000 bonus for the 300 game. One of the top memories of all time, PBA you, Tour yeah, history right there. You couldn't draw that up any better. Time now for the PBA Playoffs point list, the list of top 30 players on the points list. The PBA Playoffs for the Hall of Fame Classic last week, top 24 after the SBC Masters, Randy, yeah. advanced to the playoffs beginning April yeah. 6th. Big deal there. It's a, uh, Well, last year it was 100000 for first. And, uh, Chris Prather took home that award. But, you know, I think Tommy Jones was the fourth player in PBA history to shoot 300 in the title match. Made him the 16th player all time with 20 or more wins. How about title match? Amazing. Can't wait for our next match. Two big stars on the PBA Tour. Rash, Vincent, head to head next. Mike, hang up. The online graphics you see in today's show, including the on lane ball tracer brought to you courtesy of Clutch Bowling. Looking awesome, guys. Wow, that is so <laughs> cool. Super cool. 
Super cool. Step ladder bracket here in Shawnee, Oklahoma. John Rash effective. Strikes four times left lane, twice on the right lane. As he gets the victory over Packy Hanrahan, fellow Wichita State alum in Packy's first ever TV show. Next up, yes for Spencer. Fire Lake PBA Tournament of Champions at the age of 20 made him the event's youngest winner, eight-time champion Jesper Svensson. The Iceman cometh. Jesper Svensson absolutely loves bowling here at Fire Lake Bowling Center. In 2016, he won the Tournament of Champions here in Shawnee, becoming the youngest player to do so. Second place at the 2019 Oklahoma Open in this building. Lost to Jacob Buttruff, 267-201. Jacob not on the show this year, defending champ, but Jesper is. A lot of success in this area between the Grand Casino, a couple miles down the road, and here in Shawnee. At Fire Lake. Jesper's day starts with all 10 back and some power. Almost 20 miles an hour ball speed. Pretty deep inside to start on that right, or on, on that left lane for Jesper's fencing. But if it, it's no secret that this man here is my spirit animal. Unbelievable freak of nature. And I think if you were to extract his DNA, you could start your own Jurassic Park. <laughs> that is a great line, Randy. What you're saying is he's just something. He's, he's amazing. He's Super just so fun to watch. Natural. And what a great guy. John Rash for the first match. High shot here. Another split coming up. This time it's John Rash. Try to take care of this challenging split. Good start. Four, six, seven up. All right, so Sean Rash is going to try to get his bowling ball right over here to that part of the three pin. And then he is going to slam that three over here into the four, seven. Didn't like it out of his hand, and that's why. Whoa. Leaves three. Yeah, and that's the problem with that, sh that short pattern. If you make a mistake to the inside part of the lane, it's going to curve and curve a lot. Yeah. Four, six, oh, wow. seven stance. Open frame. Head to head with Jesper. A convincing <laughs> win in match play. 1-1 one, one all time against the Super Swede on TV. That open in the in the first frame is is not always that um, it's early. that devastating because it's early. But the count that he lost is I, I mean he went six one and that's that's not great. Yes, Prasvetsa now going from reactive resin on the left lane, which we hardly ever see him use, oh, wow. to urethane Ooh. on the right lane. This guy's ninth all time, Randy, in TV win percent, more than sixty three percent of his matches won, twenty one to twelve. TV record. Iceman. I mean, he's clutch. The pressure. Uh, take advantage of the open frame. Does so. Down goes number 10. It's leaning. It's thinking. And over it goes. Good yes, we fan. Future <laughs> Iceman. He's so excited to be on TV. Good job, buddy. He's wearing the, the same jersey that... that uh, Jesper's wearing it. Take, take a look at his arsenal, Dave. Crux Prime on the left lane and Pitch Black on the right. There he is. Now, that's the same jersey that Jesper wore the other day. I don't think Mom wants to shell out 85 bucks a jersey for, for the young man, but he does have a Jesper Svensson jersey. Check out the line here, 18. On, on the right lane, it was 10. Go. 33 early, will do so. Most pins have no chance. Yeah. No chance. No. And look at the start for Jesper Svensson. Three up, three down. Yeah, this is uh, this is what he's famous for, is just so much power, but not typically with the reactive resin bowling ball, but that that pattern is so long on the left lane, he can throw it on that lane. Now Sean Rash needs it. Boy, he needed that too, because he was working on a strike, and that was a good shot by Sean. 
Ten pin stance, he liked it. Shot, right lane, look how close he is to the channel. Flirts with it. Oh. Got that one out to the one and a half board. You know what happens if you get it out to the quarter board? It, it's zero. Great yeah. shot. So he's got another. He's going to go over. He's got a, a little over an inch to go before he's going to find trouble. But think but about isn't that. Think, but think about that. How precise the pros are. Absolutely, the Randy. And, and how good they are. They're not afraid to throw it that way, it's right? Incredible shot. Yeah, I mean, really. Any, anytime they can play that close to the edge, I think it's it's great watch. Much straighter, deeper on this lane. Big shot. difference. And a late tap on the ten helps him out. You know, the other thing that this, I'm sorry, Dave, the other thing that this shows you is the versatility of these players and what they're able to do. Look how straight Sean's going on the left lane and how much he's curving it on the right lane because he has to. And only the players that have that versatility will get it done on the dual pattern tournaments. By the way, we have six of those. Thanks, Tom Clark. PBA Tour Commissioner. I love it. It's my first time ever calling a dual pattern match. Is it really? In my career. It's, so, it's, it's pretty cool to watch. Especially it's amazing. When, especially when the players play out. Now, Jesper out to the three board. Take a look. Try to stay hot. Looks for a four straight. No, almost at a 7-10. And just a seven pin stands. That could have been a whole lot worse. You can see the difference in the two lines. The blue line was his last strike on that lane. You can see the red lines inside of that. And he definitely went high. Location looked pretty good, but I, don't, I think that maybe it just hooked a little bit more in the back part of the lane. It could have been a ball speed issue. No, Brett, ball speed? Yeah, just a little bit slower, about a half a mile an hour slower. No seven, no worries there. Tenth all time total history in TV show average, 226.23. There's 21 appearances we told you about, so he's had a lot of success on the bright lights of television. But you know him very well. He's one of your great friends. Yes. He, he's so under, just understated. He's a very soft-spoken guy. Yeah. The only English is second language behind Swedish, but I don't think that's the whole. That's his personality. His, his English is perfect. Uh, the only thing soft about this guy is the way he speaks. This dude is, inside is a monster. But you'd never know it. He's just such, got is such a right? calm demeanor. Seven pin stands for Jesper. Lanes are changing. He's coming off a match with another two-handed left. I went out to dinner with him last night, and uh, you know we talked about some things and talked about last season and what that was like for him. And he said, "Well, if it wasn't for Thailand, it wouldn't have been that good of a year." But he says, uh, "You know, I went over and I won in Thailand. He won uh, the Thailand Open in Bangkok. I think he's won that twice and finished second once. So he's made a nice living over in Thailand." Um, he says, "You know what? A good feeling about 2020." And this is a great way to start off. Week two. Go Bowling PBA Tour. Makes the show. Looking good here. About the midway point against Sean Rush. That's the Bill O'Neill. Semis last year. Tied for third. 2019 PBA Tours. Such a big thing of the PBA Tour season again this year. 24 end of the season go for hundred thousand dollars top eight get a buy in the second round of the PBA Tour playoffs Big shot here Let's go down 21 The frame That's how you do it living on the one pin deficit living on the edge Dave right there Sing one point one Randy Living on the edge? Yeah, no, that's not happening. <laughs> Beauty from Sean Rash. And one more strike. He could cut the deficit to 11. And uh, he knows that he can't let Jesper get too far ahead because one thing that the players know about Jesper Sensen out here is when he starts striking, he doesn't stop. Big shot here for Sean. Six frame. Late hit, gives him a strike, and we have got ourselves a match here, only 11 pins. Well, we've got a great match now. It's an 11-point match halfway through. The Iceman and Sean Rash going head-to-head. -head. 
here in Oklahoma. One of our new features this season on the PBA Tour on Fox and FS1 is our In the Pocket feature where each week we get a chance to get a closer look at one of the PBA pros. The player of the pocket this week, Jesper Svensson. I think that I can do something that nobody else can do. I want to be competitive every time. I really want to make sure that I can make cuts, make match plays and stuff like that. When I'm comfortable and I have it, I can strike more than anybody in the world. And I haven't been scared of dreaming and becoming a very good bowler. So now I'm here on a PBA tour and enjoying life, so I did something right. What a young talent. Yeah, he's really special. Uh, I remember the first time I saw him a few years back, and I was like, um, are you kidding me? Take a look at the difference in how he's playing the left and right lane in our 3D animation. Much straighter, the red ball is the left lane, blue ball the right lane, and you can see just how much different they're tracking to the pocket. Eleven pins, halfway through, Sean Rash working on a three-bagger. Um, we've got a long way to go in this match, folks. Anything can happen. Right lane, yes, Paul. Blitzes through the rack, shrapnel everywhere. Jesper's got some great tattoos. Am I right, Kimberly? He sure does. And when you look at Jesper, you don't see the idea of your typical bowler. In fact, he has never shied away from his love of tattoos. He recently added to his collection with a full back tat that took 120 hours to complete. Now, when I asked him the meaning behind it, he says it's the story of his life, and it just reminds him to not worry about what others think. I'm going to have him design uh, a tattoo for me. That is incredible. Yeah, that's that is cool <laughs> body art. Yeah, that was wicked sick. Me right. That's right, all right. That was yesterday right away at the bottom of the tattoo. Yeah. Enjoy your game, Randy. <laughs> He's talking to you, partner. Well, so he has a strike song, and he says, Randy, I'm going to let you pick my strike song. And he goes, and he, 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 whatever you choose, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to play it. And I said, well, you've got you, you to gotta use my jam. And he goes, what's your jam? And I said, party in the USA by MC, right? So here it is. I mean, you got to have a little Miley in there, party in the USA, he's using it. Sean Rash wants a rewrap. That was a great double coming out of that commercial break, though, from Jesper Svensson, especially after Sean Rash just threw a three-bagger on top of him. Big shot for Rash, seventh frame. Cut it to 11 pins. Go to the channel. And right in that one three pocket. Wow. All 10 back. 60 feet to success. Great. Yeah, it was. Great shot there. Look at the break point and the edge. Again, one inch from being zero. You got to trust it. The old Billy Whaley used to say, trust is a must or your game is a bust. And, well, he trusted that one perfectly. Now four in a row for Sean Rash can cut the lead to one. Four bagger this to make it a one pin match. Left lane, right at that pocket. Oh, all oh, down with a 10, a really good shot. A half an inch to the left, so or a half good. an inch to the right, and that ball strikes. It got into that weak shot, 10 zone. And there's nothing Sean could do about this pin carry. And again, that's because of the slickness of that left lane. There's the mark. Now, it's Jesper time. This is where he could step up and really slam oh, the door. He's got a max score of 268. Sean Rash's max score looks like 236. Oh, it's on the screen. I'm looking at Cecil, our scorekeeper. That long career major was literally across the street. You could basically walk there in about 30 seconds. The arena here in Shawnee. Yeah. That fire lake. We're in a different building, but it's right next door, and he said it was last night. Loves being back in Shawnee. So much success here. Big it's shot. Feel good spot for him. Oh, boy, get lucky. He was hoping for some luck, and he got it. Did you also mention the fact that he finished second here last year to Jacob Buttrip? I did, indeed. All right, well, good. 
I like it when you're on your game. Speaking of being on your game, this guy is. Get lucky. Wow, that was about as flush as it gets. Great shot by Jesper. Turkey back up by 22. Jesper gets to finish on the right lane, and he likes the right lane better. He's more comfortable on that lane. He knows exactly what the ball's going to do, and he likes to throw urethane. And that's what he's using on the right lane. Trying for the four bagger, foundation frame. Oh boy. 32 pin lead, and like out his hand, that's why. Six yeah, he got it. He got it a little too far to the left, and there's just not enough friction down lane to get it back. And that, this couldn't happen at a worse possible moment. So he's going to get to try to get his bowling ball over here to the left or the right side of the three pin, and then drive the three over into the four seven. It's not the first time we've seen this split today. Three, Pack, four, Pack, six, seven, Randy. Yeah, Packy left one early. Percentage chance. Got 21 to make it. He will not. 4-7 up. So all of a sudden the match swings. And Sean Rash is in the driver's seat, potentially with an opportunity to rally late and take out the Iceman. No, he is in the driver's seat now because if he strikes out, there's nothing Jesper can do. Again, Sean Rash Max score 236. Now Jesper 230. Oh. Walk. Slow your heart rate down. Slow your heart rate down. Sarah, her heart rate is <laughs> racing too right now. My heart rate. Do you so like that move though? Stop before you throw. Absolutely. It? You got. You have to make sure that that uh, you, you gather your thoughts uh, that or, or lack thereof. Make sure that there's not a whole lot going on. Put your hand in your ball. Look at your target and go. Huge shot, right lane, Sean Rash. Wow! That was a great shot. He kept his hand more up the back of the bowling ball, tumbled it a little more end over end. He got the ball to kind of freeze when it came off the end of the pattern. Watch this. Slow your heart rate down. Great shot. Now, can he get the 10 pin out on the left lane? Needs a double and five. It's all about getting the corner pin out. Watch the corner pin. I think he's going to hit the pocket. Dragon pattern. Ten pin got knocked out, didn't it? And down it goes. There's one. That's pretty good. That's a lead change. Takes the lead. Again, this guy's got a lot to prove today when Brunswick acquired. Ebonite International, Sean's stock dropped tremendously. He found a new home with his new manufacturer, 900 Global, and now, you know, he's a, uh, it, 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 he, won't, he won't say it, but as a player on the inside, I went through the same thing way back in my career. You'd really like to prove the naysayers wrong. Needs oh. another strike. Yeah! Gets it! Right. On the top left lane. Making great shots. He really is. And Amazing. now just needs five, Randy, to put this one away. Amazing how Jesper just let it get away from him in the ninth frame there in that big split. Now he's got, there's nothing he can do. Sean Rash will get at least five on this next ball. Bidding today for his 15th career PBA tournament. He's going down time. the middle. He's going to throw it hard down the middle. Good idea. Just need five. He'll do that. He'll do that. Nine. He'll have the win. Appreciate it. Two up, two down for the five seed. First, Packy Hanlahan. And now, Jesper Svensson dispatched by Sean Rash. Climbing the ladder. Who's next? The two seed, Brad Miller from Lee's Summit, Missouri. Oh, he's a real KC Chiefs fan.
Don't forget to join us for our next PBA telecast right here on FS1 Saturday. Saturday, not Sunday, 4.30 Eastern time for the PBA Jonesboro Open live from Jonesboro, Arkansas. The new season of the PBA Tour continues next Saturday. What, what the day? the Jonesboro what, Open. What day? Saturday. You, you said Saturday. Mark it down. All right, I did. Updated. Our stepladder bracket, Sean Rash, gets through Packy Hanrahan, and then we surprised by the winner over Jesper. Yeah, I think that a lot of people were surprised at the way that one turned out, but it just goes to show you that there's 10 frames in a game of bowling, and anything can happen. And boy, what an opportunity given to Sean Rash. He took full advantage of it. He finished second in the 2019 Roth Holman doubles with Kyle Sherman. He's looking for his first PBA Tour title. Brad Miller. Brad Miller says he's bowling the best of his life in his second in this building last year with doubles partner Kyle Sherman. He says it's kind of like a little deja vu going on. Today, he looks for his first win. You will not find a bigger Kansas City Chiefs fan. No. Is he ever signed yeah. for the Super Bowl on Fox? Next yeah. week in Miami. Yeah, you, you want to get him jacked up, just, just go over to him and go, hey, go Niners. Yeah. Number two seed here today. Sean Rash gets to finish on the right lane, and that was Brad Miller's choice. Interesting. Mm -hmm. Here's Rash. Dragon, not the slayer he had hoped for, wow. and leaves the seven. That was very friendly. Good shot. Thanks for it. Took a look to his left there. A little oh, early. Move, distracted him slightly, but he does get his mark. <sighs> Last 2016 TV win, that was for Sean Rash. That's Jason Belmonte. PBA Detroit Open. You and I called that. Mm -hmm. Allen Park, Michigan. Yep. Been a while for Sean then on TV. This guy's never been on a singles TV show in his life until right now. Brad Miller. First shot of his career. Oh. It's like that. Could have been worse. 4 7 up, almost dead. 3 4 7 10 split. He's saying, please, no, not on my first shot. Yeah, right now he's waiting for the oxygen mask to fall from the ceiling so he can put it on and take a couple deep breaths. And that's what it's like, you know, and with players that don't have a lot of experience on television, it's rough. And, and even the players that have experience, they're always going to be nervous. They just, you know, they just kind of get over the nerves a little bit quicker. But, you know, Brad's got limited TV experience. Doubles with Kyle Sherman and then the right PBA the playoffs. Get down out of that's here. it. Mark Roth, Marshall Holman, PBA Doubles Championship, but lost. Along with Kyle Sherman. Kyle was joking with us today. Well, he better not win now after he and I couldn't win on TV together here in Shawnee. There's Kyle Sherman getting everything done for that YouTube channel. They've got tons of subscribers. And he said every day he gets back. 56,000 subscribers. He gets back to the hotel room after he bowls and likes all the well, comments. Whoa. He's a nine pin. That's a exact lot of comments to like. Year. And he says he'll like it even if it's a negative comment. Yeah. Well, there's a reason why, Dave. More comments, more revenue. It's all about the greenbacks. <laughs> but they're doing well with it. Both <laughs> guys doing, are pretty no, They're doing great, man. It's awesome. They're doing great. They're having a great time doing it. It's great for the sport. There's a nine pin. You know? And he stays clean early. So that's a relief. <sighs> Just got, trying to get his legs underneath him and fight through the nerves. This man here is not nervous at all. He's completely comfortable. He's got two matches under his belt, knows exactly what he's doing. All, it's all about execution now and staying ahead of transition. Ten pin only. First 
September TV match, of course, with Miller. We're looking ahead, maybe, the top seed, Ryan Simonelli. 2-0 against Ryan, a lefty on TV for Sean Rash. Great crowd here today. SRO in Shawnee. Lined up early this morning. From the Fire Lake Bowl. Watch these outstanding PBA bowlers compete. Punches that one three pocket, and the results are evident. <laughs> Let's see the young TV rookie responds. Family have been season ticket holders for the Kansas City Chiefs for 50 years. They have waited a long time for. The Chiefs to return to the Super Bowl. They're a fun team to watch. Incredible. What a game that is going to be next week on Yeah. Games. Kicks at 6.30. Brad Miller using urethane on that right lane. And high once again, four pin. Sean Rash, the only player thus far today that has used reactive resin on the short wolf pattern, that right lane. Everybody else has used urethane. It's a good shot. Anytime you see a player hold their finish for that long, you know they've executed nicely. I just love his attitude. We met with him last night. So happy about this opportunity. Well, well, all week to get to the two C. That's not easy to do. Look out. All right. Head to PBA.com, check out all the latest officially licensed PBA apparel and merchandise. Items include PBA hats, t-shirts, and custom jerseys, including replica jerseys of PBA star players. Head to PBA.com, click on the Shop PBA link on the main menu to get shopping. I thought you said PBA half t-shirts. I was thinking, man, I got to get one of those. Please don't. Not something I want to see, Randy. Left lane. Yeah, that's soft and 10. Pin. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Can't find that pocket to kick out the 10. Slow moving left lane. Got to figure out a way to get your ball to come around the corner just a little bit harder. And it's tough to do when the pattern is so long. Those eyes drift down towards the foul line as he goes through his approach. A little bit softer speed, and that might kick that 10 out. Nine pin, four pin, 10 pin for the last three shots. I think the Super Bowl might come down to great defense, don't you? You changed the racks. Yeah. Oh, is that a good time to change the racks? <laughs> yeah, it was. <laughs> he says, is that a good time to change the racks? Yeah, I mean, depend. I think the, I think the game changer is what Kansas City's defense does. Juice held the Titans. Star running back Derrick Henry at 69 yards in the AFC title game last week. 69. It's pretty good. Turn back, right lane, John Rash, stay in solid. Chris Killings, our proprietor of Fire Lake Bowling Center. We saw Brad Miller chatting with him a moment ago. Great to see Chris's staff being so great guy. Helpful every one of the PBA tour. Yeah, all just at Fox as well. Just a great guy. All the players love Chris for, for everything that he does for uh, for us and, and the uh, the tour. He loves having us come to Shawnee, and uh, we we love Chris for all he does for bowling. Reset, regroup, through the process. Go through the process. Rex left reach. We saw that. Well, it was critical late in the match. Has to go up by 22 pins. Left lane. Yes, sir. Oh, 
Huh. Well, 22 pin lead now through five. Sean Rash is uh, keeping the pressure on Brad Miller. It's exactly what you expect from a future Hall of Famer and a veteran like Sean. And now Brad Miller, his mind is saying, I've got to figure out a way to start striking. celebrate young man because he's found the look and as the match progresses unless he can start striking big he will not have a chance against Sean Rush. Well watch how nice this shot is and look at him post that shot up he's been working with coach Mike Jazz now on that very thing getting better at the finish his approach used to be very slow at the start and then he'd get very quick towards the end of his approach him and Jazz now work out a thing where he's a little bit more even where the cadence of his footwork is a little closer together, a little smoother. Oh, nice break there. I mean, real nice. So he goes from the soft 10 to the trip four. He got that ball to come off of the spot just a little bit harder and had that snap and get very fortunate to trip that four pin. Now things get interesting. We have tragic sports news to share. Legendary NBA superstar Kobe Bryant died today in a helicopter crash in Calabasas, California. Kobe Bryant is fourth all time in NBA scoring. He won five NBA titles. Kobe Bryant was 41 years old. In store for a great finish here from Shawnee. Rash Miller head to head. Who gets the top seed? Ryan Simonelli about to find out. Five combined strikes between the two. As we head to the sixth and then seventh frames. Rash goes for the four back in the sixth frame. And a 22 pin lead. It. Great shot out of the break, Dave, playing that close to the edge. Look at it, 1.3 inches from the gutter. Right out of commercial break, working on a string, and he continues his hot hand now with four in a row. Watch this, coming right at you. Close. Just great execution. That's all that is. <sighs> As long as he doesn't get ahead of himself, he is going to have a really good chance of getting to the title match against Simonelli. Got to trust it. Start the right way. Hey, at least it wasn't me. Got to start right. He can't hear me. It's all about your process. Second time you've seen that from Sean. Get your process right. He's fine. One shot. Strike comparison, One shot. left lane, right lane. <laughs> and that's the difference here in this semifinal match. Goes to the five bagger, 32 pin lead. Be good. Lots of the good it is. Now turn back into the pit. Again, yeah, just duplicating <laughs> shots. That's you take stopped. a look at what he's Making doing here shots. at Strike Track. Keep doing what you Boy, want. Boy, it looks be. good. Don't worry about anybody else. His zone down lane has been pretty consistent on that left lane, just inside of third arrow and. Man, it only went out to what was the number, Brent? The, like the ten, like the second arrow, and maybe a four-board head belly. Physics on the left lane, pitch black on the right for Brad Miller. Needs a tie. Coming in high, misses the mark. Three so six ten. Goodness. You know, when I, I saw Brad uh, warming up and then using urethane on that right lane, I was wondering what it was going to do to Sean Rash's ball reaction because urethane makes the front part of the lane hook and then drags oil down towards the pins, which then makes the back part of the lane slick. And 
so far so good for Sean Rash. Brad's the one having trouble getting that urethane ball to the pocket. 3 6 10, that cover does cover. Kimberly joined by Brad Miller's YouTube channel. Co host Kyle Sherman. Thanks, guys. So, Kyle, big day for Brad, big day for your guys' YouTube channel. Just your fans, but for Brad. You know, these moments are so huge, but we just have fun with it. I mean, we got a really cool young group of guys. You know, it's not just me and Brad. You know, we, we call it the house. Packy's one of them. Darren made the show last week. And, you know, these moments are so huge and fun and organic that, you know, we just turn on the camera and these guys, these guys do all the work. It all happens. Thank you so much for your time. Give your thanks, great to hear from Kyle. More than 9 million views. Chronicling the life on the PBA tour. The Brad and Kyle channel, not the Kyle and Brad channel. Brad was very adamant about pointing that out. I don't go to their channel. They didn't give me a free subscription, so. <laughs> you gotta I, support those guys. Yeah, Good no, stuff. That, that I do, and they're, they're just, they're great guys. I'm off it. Look out. Hurry! Does hurry! And Sean Rash pays hot up 45 pins. Super Bowl Sunday. Make sure you're watching before kickoff for a pregame show. You will not want to miss Danny Lovato, DJ Khaled, Yolanda Adams, Dan and Shea, and Pitbull. It's all before kickoff. Don't miss the Fox Super Bowl pregame show next Sunday. That starts at 1 Eastern with our coverage leading up to Super Bowl 54. Sean Rash, you better believe it. Exclamation point on a great game. Well, I think that, that hits all but over now. I mean, that puts him in the 250s. Seven back. And the best Brad Miller can shoot is 234. Sean needs to keep it on the lane, and he's going to move on to Bull Simonelli for the title. Climbing the ladder is Sean Rash. You know, and I got to thinking about this urethane ball from Brad. I wonder if that's going to help Sean. I wonder if it's going to create a little bit of, maybe a little bit of hold. I wish Stu Williams was here. He'd tell me. Yeah, never, that's fly. Never found that lane. You know, kept going high, kept going high, and then the time he does hit the pocket, it's a week 10. What well, he's got next week to look forward to. Saw his friends right behind him there. A lot of Chiefs hats. This match is over. Cross lane. And pin. So we're going to move on here. Ryan Simonelli, the top seed, awaits the winner, and that will be Sean Rash. So Sean Rash will try to climb the ladder all the way from the number five seed and win yet another match in the title tilt, which is on the way from Shawnee, Oklahoma. Who stands in the way between Rash and his 15th title? That guy, the lefty, Ryan Simonelli. Let's see you fire that Gibson, baby! 279, 189. John Rash, 10 straight strikes. And a big victory over Miller, advancing to play the top seed, Ryan Simonelli. Another week on the PBA Tour, another C, and a different set of food options. The favorite fare of the PBA pros is the subject of today's Go Bowling Presents Pressing Questions with Kimberly Pressler. Marshall, let's talk about something that I love. It's food. What's your favorite food? Sushi, hands down. Favorite food. I'm a steak and baked potato. Pasta. Italian food. Probably sushi. Mama's fried chicken, mashed potatoes, and corn. A little bit of a country boy. Well, we own an Italian restaurant, so that's kind of like a, a go-to. You do? I did not know that. What's it called? Falbo's Restaurant and Lounge. It's in Latrobe. Nice plug. So who is the pickiest eater on tour? Oh, I'd have to go with Tommy. Tommy Jones? Oh, yeah. Tommy Jones. Tommy Jones. Tommy Jones. Tommy's the guy that goes all the way to Japan for McDonald's. He's bigger than my kids. If it doesn't come with a number or come in a wrapper, I don't think he eats it. So does he put ketchup on steak? Because I heard that rumor. He puts ketchup on everything, and he has to have a lot of it. It is very true. I like chicken, I like cheese, and I like ketchup. Um, and I don't branch out a whole lot. I don't eat fish. Do you really put ketchup on steak? 100%. Everyone's got their thing. 
He just doesn't like good food. I don't know. <laughs> hey, it works for him. Maybe I should start changing my diet and start, start eating the same stuff Tommy does. Love it, Kimberly. <laughs> Haven't seen Belmont on a show yet. The five-time player, the 11-time yeah. major champion. I'm sure that's going to change very soon. Maybe Jones will next week. Can't wait for the championship match here today in Oklahoma. John Rash goes for his 15th title. Ryan Simonelli wants number nine today in Shawnee. Title tilt on the way. The PBA on FS1 is sponsored by Go Bowling. For promotional offers, tips to improve your game, news, or to locate a bowling center near you, log on to GoBowling.com. They're competing for that trophy. And here we go, uninterrupted coverage of the championship match as we check the step ladder bracket. Leading us to this point, Fire Lake Bowl in Shawnee, Oklahoma. And the top seed, Simonelli, against the five seed, Sean Rash, climbing the ladder to take on the lefty. The 2015 Bowmore AMF US Open champion with eight PBA Tour titles. The Ryan Express, Ryan Simonelli. Now coming off a sixth place finish last week, the Ryan Express looks for title number nine and first televised win since 2015. And oh, by the way, just one win away from possible Hall of Fame consideration. All right, one major win away. Two regular titles away and he's been through a lot he's getting yeah, he's closing last several months no you're right this guy he hey this guy got suspended for two events for um conduct unbecoming a professional by just some public comments about the lane conditions on a podcast takes care of business there at first was suspended by tom clark for the end of the summer tour, reduced to August 14th, in the end. As we check yeah. the tail of the tape here. Yeah, 33 and 37 years of age, and I don't know the rest of it because the graphic's gone, but getting back to uh, Ryan Simonelli, it's been a tough road for him, lost his, his staff contract, uh, went through the suspension, and uh, you know, he's he's on the road to recovery. Oh. Great shot Ring there. a 10 pin, the definition is that pin wraps around the 10. Great shot. Remember we talked about Sean Rash's 300 games bowled on television? Uh -huh. He did one of them against Ryan Simonelli. And I believe it was at the Tournament of Champions. That's correct. I'll double check. But is that right? Got two in his career. First yeah. ever to do that on TV. Cross lane for the 10. And Sean Rash been out here a long time, Randy. A lot of bowling as the lanes break down, the lanes transition, he has been ahead of it all. Brilliant bowling from Rash with the dual lane challenging conditions here. Well, Dave, the good news for Rash is that there's, there was only one other right-hander on the telecast, so very little traffic. And, and I mean, if there's any changes that, that are happening, really, he's the one that's creating them. Oh. Left lane, different approach, different ball speed, different ball reaction, but Shots. all ten really back. Shot. Good start. I mean, I'm so impressed to climb the ladder in these challenging conditions all the way up. To be this good this long in a day is hard. Yeah. Really hard. Well, it, it is. You know, he had a couple of things going for him. So first timer that was on television, uh, he took care of a couple of lefties and then another player looking to, to win for the first time. But the Ryan Express looks pretty good, doesn't he? It's two pretty good opening shots. Similarly, loves to bring it. He loves to throw it hard, and he can do that on the left lane. Uh, excuse me, on the right lane. On the left lane, he's using probably uh, his strongest piece of equipment with a ton of sandpaper uh, that was used to that bowling ball prior to this finals match. As hard as he throws it on that, as you, it prism solid on that left lane, he's got to find a way to get the ball to read and pick up and and create some friction on that long pattern. Looking for left lane magic. Seven pin stands. 
for the man who's got the all-time highest PBA Tour TV average ever, 232.05. 19 times on TV in his career prior to today. Xavier Creighton's coming up next. Great Big East hoops. Tremendous guards for Creighton. Marcus Sikorowski, he's a player to watch. That's Nick Dallas, by the way. The lefty shooting. So it's X and the Blue Jays. Big East hoops coming away next. Just enough of the seven pin. And no issue there. So Sean Rash working on a strike in the second. Can take the lead by one early here. Third time we've seen that today, Rand. Don't think it over. Go back through his routine again and take his time and reset. Reset. Process oriented. Oh, These teams met in 2012. 47th edition of the PBA Tournament of Champions. Sean Rash, Ryan Simonelli squared off in the final. The Rash's day. Five years between major titles for Sean Rash, but the Alaska native knocked off Ryan Simonelli 239 205. For his second career major, Red Rock in Vegas. That's a victory yell for you, Randy <laughs> Peterson. That's a celebration. I was there. Awesome. I remember that yell. I think his game looks better now than it did then. Hands more up the back. And what a huge break that was. He walked in front of it, but it looked like he just rolled the bucket, or at least the 2-8. I couldn't see all the pins that were up. Maybe we can get a replay of it. Slow down. First title in three years for Ryan this past summer, the PBA Summer Tour in Delaware. It's on the back side of that suspension from Commissioner Tom Clark. Not the break you wanted there. 10 up. Nice. Ryan told us, look, I learned my lesson. Different. Wasn't a great idea. Learned my lesson. Well, that was a couple boards to the left for Ryan Simonelli, and this is about as bad a break as you can get. I mean, this is a similar hit to Sean Rash's last hit on the left lane where Sean kind of crumbled the buckle, the bucket, and here Ryan Simonelli leaves the 9-10. Don't see this leave a lot. Splits the difference nicely and takes care of the spare. Yeah, great cover there. That's not easy, especially on a lane that's pretty much kind of like bowling on gravel. You told us last night he never had a check in this building before. Fire no. Lake and Shawnee never came cashed. in with very low expectations. And here mm -hmm. he is, the top seed. And he's closing in on a possible championship. Got to get past Sean Rash first. You know, now coming out of his suspension, he did win the Gene Carter's Pro Shop Classic. And in, in, uh, that was a, a flow bowling event, but it counted as a PBA title. So on, it was a nice rebound for him. But I think that you kind of sense the same thing in our meetings with him, kind of a sense of urgency with everything he's kind of been through in a short period of time. Uh, first with the suspension, losing uh, his, uh, his staff contract, his manufacturing contract, um, and now being a free agent and able to throw any piece of equipment he wants. It's a little different, different waters for him. Last sticks for the four bagger. Oh. Now that was that was about as close as he's gotten to the edge all day. He's been flirting with his ass there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we knew this would happen in the right lane, right? Yes, yeah, sir. Guess what? Though Sean gets to finish on the left lane. Yes, sir. And I, I mean, I don't know if that's a good thing or not because I think the players are more confident on the right lane. At least they know what the ball's going to do if they get it to that spot. But, I mean, if it was me, I think I'd want to finish on the left lane where I can kind of keep everything in front of me and go straighter and just kind of trap it. Right, Sarah here in support. Sean's wife. And she had a very positive spin on the new ball contract. 
equipment changes for Sean Rosh. And things clearly are going really well. He's at the top of his game after a brilliant 2019 season. Something in my thumb alone. He's one on TV in three and a half years. One shot. out of one on TV in three and a half years, but I'll tell you what, he sure won a lot of money last year. 181,000 worldwide. Dominated the summer. Well, right at that one through pocket. Wow. You bet. And it's five in a row. The five bagger for Sean Rash. Finished top four at the playoffs, Dave. I mean, he, he had a monster season. One of his best ever. And I'll tell you what, he's in complete control. Last game shooting 270. First game he had six strikes for the game. The next game he had eight. Last game he had 10. Right now he's got five through six frames. This guy's on fire. Simonelli needs a rally, needs it now. There's a strike. Cuts it at 23. I'm not sure if you're going to stop the Rash Express, though. Talk about the Ryan Express. Max score for Simonelli, 267. Rash can finish with 290. Ooh. There's your full scoreboard. Love that look. Basically tells the picture, or paints the picture as to what is the difference in this match. And it's those two middle frames, third and fourth frame for Simonelli. Remember, Nine stands. remember that was the spot that Jesper got it into in the critical uh, moment, ninth frame of his match against Sean Rash. When he got it to that spot, he left a big split, ended up costing him the match. And Ryan Simonelli just found that same spot. Not the same case, I don't think, for Sean Rash. I think he's been camped out in the same area on that left lane, and he's built a nice little track for his bowling ball to respond on. Double wood, got it. Has the mark, but needs a bunch of strikes right now. Sean Rash is on fire. Five back. He's to go up by 35 pins. In the right lane entering the championship match, he had struck 11 times out of 17 tries. Go. Stay on, does so. Rush, strike, 10 back in the pit with power. Well, we've seen Sean in this position before where he, it seemed like he had complete control and, and only to have something devastating happen and then end up losing the match. Like last year in Lubbock against Dick Allen, he whiffs a 10 pin in the 10th frame. Dick Allen gets up, carries a lucky hit, then doubles and ends up winning uh, and snatching victory right out of Sean Rash's hands. Can Sean Rash close today? You good. Looks for another. Got another. Yeah, he's, what a run. He's been near flawless all day. It's been quite the performance. And the way he's been able to play both lanes, completely different, two completely different bowling balls, two completely different lines, and the execution has been exact, spot on. Seven back, 45 pin advantage. Time is now, Simonelli, he's got to have nothing but strikes. There's one in the eighth, and hope for a break. Well, Max scores, look at that. He strikes here, he can shoot 245, but he's going to need a lot of help from Sean Rash. Now, remember, Rash still has one more shot on that right lane. And what was the one thing, the one theme was gutter balls on the right lane. We haven't seen one yet today. Not yet. Close. Hopefully we don't, but you never know. All 10 back for the top seed. Just trying to stay in the conversation. You heard him say it. Keep him honest.
This is the, the shot that wins it for him right here, in my opinion. Looks for his eighth in a row. Yes! And he's got it. Six. John Rash has won this tournament. It's his 15th career PBA Tour title. He's done it today in Shawnee. Keep it on the lane. He's going to throw it right down the middle. Oh, he's on the, excuse me. <laughs> Finishing on the left lane. My bad. No problem there. How about 10, Sean. How about another one? Why not? Another 10 backer. Keep the run going. One more for another 10 bagger. Possible 290. How about finishing 279, 290? Talk about manning up. Wow. And now that the win is official, we have permission to say this. Sarah is expecting a baby. Packy Hammerhand, 226-202. Yes, Bruce Benson, 235-220. Dominant win over Miller. 279-189. And the championship match against the top seed, Ryan Simonelli. You yeah, uh, broke him down fantastic for yourself. Thanks. You did a good job. No problem. Go get that trophy, Sean Rash. Thank you, Oklahoma. Thank you, Global, for believing in me when others wouldn't. Thank you, Mom and Dad. Thank you, Sarah. Uh, happy birthday, Dad. What a birthday present. Uh, Vice, Genesis, Mongoose, High Five Gear. I like Shawnee, Oklahoma. This is a great place. Uh, beautiful. Kimberly Pressler is going to make her way in to talk with the champion. She's ready. Sean's ready. Go ahead, guys. All right. Thanks, guys. So, Sean, you climbed the step ladder. You worked hard for this win today. But can we talk about the fact that everyone seemed to have a hard time finding the pocket? You did not. The last 24 shots, 20 of them were strikes. How did you manage to do that? Um, consistency, repetition, process-oriented. Uh, I'm sure I owe a few bucks for some fines, but I don't care. Uh, maybe somebody else will pay it for me. But uh, it's all about one shot at a time. You know, sometimes we get ahead of ourselves and we look for the outcome before it's there. I did that for four or five years and uh, started thinking about the process more. Now here we are. Now let's talk about the right lane because you were flirting with disaster. That gutter by, thought for sure it was going to go in the gutter on that one board. Um, at any point, did you think it was going to go in? Well, a couple times. I said a couple things inside that I can't repeat on the air. I've already done that once. Uh, but, you know, it's, you got to live and die on the gutter. Uh, I've won three times on Wolf. I love bowling on that pattern. I love bowling here in Shawnee. Uh, Chris asked me to move here. That ain't happening. So <laughs> I don't think the wife's ready to move back to the Midwest. And then on that right lane again, everyone went with urethane. You went with reactive resin. Why? Well, I'm not a big fan of urethane. Everyone on tour knows it. I think we should ban it. Um, I've been criticized for that for years. 
Uh, it's a touch thing. It's, uh, I just don't have the touch with the earth thing. I, I don't mind admitting I'm not good with it. Uh, I've practiced my butt off to try to get better, but when I have a look like that, I'm not going to go away from it. And his beautiful wife, Sarah, is standing here with us as well. And Sarah, we were watching you very emotional during these last few matches. What does this win mean to you and your family? It's everything. It reaffirms our decision to go global. And <laughs> it's just, it's been really great. And I think you have some news to share with us. Yeah. Uh, so we're, uh, we're expecting baby number three. So this uh, will take care of some diapers. All right, congratulations on the extension of your guys' family and for the 15th PBA Tour title win. Oh, congratulations, you guys. 15th career title. Plus the bonus announcement of another rash on the way. It's motivation, huh? Baby number three. And what a way, Randy Peterson, to wrap up week two of the 2020 Go Bowling PBA Tour. Yep. Climbing the ladder is an extraordinary challenge. Sean Rash did that today for title number 15. You know, I won my first title back in 1986 doing the same thing. Um, and I'll never forget that win. But you're right. It's, it's not something you see um, every week out here on the tour. And it's because of so, there's so many factors, uh, especially if, if you're right-handed and everybody else is right-handed and the transition that the lanes go uh, through and how often they, and how quickly they change. Today's Sean Rash, um, well, he, he had a lot of things go right for him. Three left-handers on the telecast certainly helped his side of the lane and minimized that traffic. But what won Sean Rash this tournament was his execution. I thought his execution was as good as I've ever seen. I thought he was just simply almost perfect today. Week one, Tommy Jones, tremendous 300 game. Week two, well, Sean Rash. Yep. Just as impressive in a different way, PBA Jonesboro Open is coming up next Saturday here on FS1 at 4.30 Eastern time. Mark it down, it's Saturday. Hoops on the way, Big East basketball, Xavier taking on Creighton. Now for the entire crew, Kimberly Pressler, Randy Pearson, it's Dave Ryan saying so long from Shawnee. The man of the day is Sean Rash. He wins his 15th career title.